Hi, it's Juan Pandita here and in this video I'll demonstrate how to use the concept sketch action for Photoshop. Let's start with the installation of the three files of the preset. First thing, go to menu window, actions and here in the actions panel click the menu at the top right corner, then select load actions and select the action file from your hard drive. Now let's open the preset manager from edit, presets, preset manager and here select brushes as preset type, then click load and load also the concept sketch brushes file. Here you can see the brushes correctly installed. And for the last file still in the preset manager, change the preset type to patterns and load also the concept sketch patterns file. Now let's open an image to work with. I'll be using this one. And before using the action set, there are a few things to check. The first thing is go to image, image size, and make sure that your image has a good resolution. The action was tested on images between 2000 and 5000 pixels. The largest one of these two parameters should be inside this range. If it isn't, change it in this panel and click OK. Next, press B on your keyboard to select the brush tool and make sure in the top option bar that the parameters opacity and fill are both 100%, like this. Then, here in the layers panel, click the menu icon at the top, select panel options and make sure that the option add copy to copy layers and group is active. Last thing, make sure that the layer of the image is locked and set as background, like this. If it's not set as background, you can do it by selecting the layer, going to layers, new, background for layer. Okay, now we are ready to make a quick setup that the action needs in order to work. Create a new layer, clicking this icon on the layers panel. Then press F5 on your keyboard to open the brushes panel and select a brush with any color. You can use the first brush of the set for this phase, which is concept sketch basic brush. Then with the new layer selected, paint a focus area over the image. The action will turn this area into the primary part of the sketch. If you prefer, you can draw this area with any tool other than the brush, for example the wand, lasso or pen tool. Also, this layer will be automatically renamed as focus area during the playback of the action. Ok, now before using the action, make sure to have only two layers in your file. The image itself and above the highlighted area. This is very important because if there are more than two layers, the action won't work properly. Open the actions panel again, select the concept sketch action and click play. The playback will take a couple of minutes and it can vary depending on the resolution of the image. When the playback finishes, the message render completed will appear. Click continue. Notice here in the layers panel all the layers and group generated by the action. At the beginning it will look messy. To quickly reorganize this panel, hold Alt on your keyboard and close the main group concept sketch output by clicking its arrow. Then release Alt from your keyboard and when you open the group again, all the layers and groups inside will be reorganized. Let's take a quick look at the subgroups inside the main output group. Hide them starting from the top to see what each one does. Next, we will see four basic editing methods that can be applied to all the layers and groups generated by the action. Just by using these methods, you'll be able to greatly change the initial result and manipulate the image to fit your needs. Ok, the first thing is to edit layer by layer. The action generates many layers and subgroups, sometimes you don't need all of them for a great result. Take a quick look to each layer in the subgroups one by one. When you see how each layer is contributing to the final image, you will better understand which layer to adjust, enhance or hide. The second thing, which is very important, is the use of these mass channels. Each layer and group has one. Some of them greatly affect the final result, like this one in coloring, while others are just blank mass channels. You can use these masks to hide or reveal parts of a layer. Click on the mask channel of a layer, select the brush tool with either a white or black color and paint over the image. A black brush hides the painted parts of a layer while a white brush reveals parts of it. You can view the mask channel by alt clicking it in the layers panel. Also mute it and unmute it by shift clicking it. 
and also invert it by selecting it and pressing Ctrl I. Then you can also double click the mask channel to open its property and edit the density and filler of the mask. Next method which is very easy is changing the blending mode and transparency of the layers. You can modify the blending modes and the opacity and fill of the layers and groups by using the controls in the top of the layers panel. Or also by double clicking the layers here in the layer style dialog box. And at last we have duplication and transform. You can duplicate layers by pressing Ctrl J on your keyboard. Then you can modify the duplicate layer and mix it with the original one to make variations. You can also move, scale and rotate layers with the transform tool. Select a layer and press Ctrl T on your keyboard to use it. Now we will see a quick description of each subgroup and how it can be modified. Starting from the bottom, but there isn't a predefined sequence to do the editing. The layer paper here is just a simple solid color and you can change the default white color by double clicking the thumbnail. Inside this subgroup here there are a few coloring layers. The main three are color, grayscale 1 and grayscale 2. Try different combinations of visibility and blending modes of this layer to achieve different effects. The other three coloring layers, marker strokes and add shadows, are very easy to understand. Also with this, try different combinations of opacity and blending modes. The group coloring is using a mask to make the painted effect, and it can be personalized using the brushes of the set. If you modify this mask and want to restore the original one, there's a copy of it in the layer Color Mask Backup. There are various ways to copy it. A quick method is to select the mask channel, hold Alt on the keyboard and drag the backup mask to the coloring group. Next, the outlines and these layers can be edited using the basic methods. And to make them visible also outside of the focus area, just need to double click their mask channel and modify the density parameter in the properties panel. Then the hatching and these layers are made using five different patterns. You can edit these patterns by double clicking the layer or directly the pattern overlay layer style. And here in the layers panel you can modify the type of pattern, the blending mode, its opacity and scale. Also while the pattern overlay panel is opened like this, you can move the pattern by dragging it in the canvas. Then here in details and customization. Here the first four layers will add some details to the sketch. Modify them using the basic methods. Then here custom marker can be used to make your own coloring and add it to the original one. To do it select the mask channel of the layer, then the brush concept sketch custom marker and paint on the image. The layer above the saturate can be unhided to make the custom coloring black and white. Notice from this little arrow icon that it has a clipping mask on the layer below. If for arrow the clipping mask gets deactivated, you can restore it by right clicking the layer and selecting create clipping mask. Custom pen instead is a simple layer that can be used to draw custom stroke using the brush concept sketch custom pen. Both of these brushes are responsive to graphical tablets. Then the construction lines can be edited using the basic methods and not all of them are necessary for a nice result. Each layer is provided of a color overlay layer style. You can use it to change their color. Next, let's take a look at data and here all the layers are smart objects that can be edited using the basic methods. They are arranged in different positions around the canvas. Select one and press Ctrl T to move, scale and rotate it in a position that works nicely with your image. Also here there's a color overlay for each layer that can be used to change the color very quickly. For both the layers in data and construction lines, by using the basic methods of duplication, mass channel and transformation, it is possible to create clones of them and make the final effect look more complex. Next one is paper texture. 
and here the usage of the layer paper texture is very straightforward. Paper grid has three layer styles, use pattern overlay to change the parameters of the grid pattern, color overlay to change the color of the grid, and stroke to modify the white border of the page. Use the pattern overlay of the crumpled effect layer to change the parameters of its pattern. Next, the layers inside the post effects can be used to fine tune and balance the image. They are all adjustment layers that are very easy to use. And at last, the color corrections group. And here, the layers will give a final color grading and further control over the look of the image. A color correction is not always necessary, but it can blend all the elements together and give a different tone to the image. It's a total of 14 color options and hide them one by one and choose your favorite. Also, you can use the opacity parameter to tone it down if it's too strong. The last two options, negative and blueprint, are each one made of four different adjustment layers that can be modified to achieve different effects. These two color options work better when the coloring subgroup is hidden. And that's all for this video tutorial. Thank you for the attention.